Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today we're taking a look at the Tuya Knife Bruiser. This is one of the more budget friendly models from Tuya Knives. And they sort of right now have, I guess, two sort of main emphasis, if you will. Uh, there's knives that fit into this category with the D2, G10 stainless steel, and then there are the titanium frame locks that are in S35VN. Um, and this one fits into, of course, the, the sort of the more budget-minded category, but it fits into a broader, broader category as well that a lot of companies are doing. You know, I think of a lot of the overseas companies, Stedman and We and um, <clears throat> uh, Best Tech and uh, the Tuya Knife here and Max Ace and a number of other companies. They have these knives that are going to be similar construction, D2 steel, and they're going to be trying to offer, and, and I think it's a, a very legitimate thing to do, but they're trying to offer a higher end fit and finish, a higher end feel, really nice action, uh, pretty good design, you know, a fairly tough, well-built knife on bearings uh, to give you that nice higher end feeling action, but to come in at a lower price point. And, and so this one absolutely fits right into that category, and I think it does a pretty good job. Uh, there are the only the only challenge is going to be that there are quite a number of options if this is the kind of knife you're looking at. So uh, that's about the only challenge with bringing another knife into this sort of segment of the market, if you will. Uh, I will say I really like a few things about this knife. The only thing I'm not in love with is really just the overall look of it. I don't find this to be a hugely attractive knife. However, I do find it to be an extremely functional knife and it's been a real joy, you know, using this, getting to do some cutting with it, flipping it, carrying it, everything that a knife is supposed to do, this honestly does really, really well. So let's go ahead and get into our discussion on the Tuya Knife Bruiser. I will say, if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, or if you just want more information, uh, the link in the description box will take you over to Dave Warren's Facebook page. He's the U.S rep for Tuya Knife and uh, it's really nice to see that they've done that. So he's going to be the guy to sort of deal with warranty and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, getting that out of the way, uh, check the description box and you can go over to Tuya Knife Facebook and get a lot more information about all their other models and of course you can even buy one if you'd like. So uh, size and weight on this guy, eight and a half inches overall, three and nine sixteenths on the blade. So just a hair over three and a half inches here. The handle length is just a hair over five inches and the weight on this is 4.9 ounces. So that's, you know, for a knife that is, you know, eight and a half inches quite solidly, that's not a bad weight. And I will say this, the knife carries really, really nicely in pocket. I've carried this around quite a bit and had really, really a good experience with it in terms of how it carries and how it fills that role of sort of a, a good functional EDC knife. Uh, I have no complaints whatsoever in that regard. Uh, the blade is um, D2 steel. We have really nice satin grind here, sort of a clip point blade. Now they have done like sort of a black coating on the flats and of course then ground that out after. You can see the Tuya Knife logo and the Tuya Knife over here, D2 steel there. Now I've got to say guys, while I'm not in love with the overall shape of this knife, it really, really does function well. The D2 steel has held an edge really nicely for me. It's nice and thinly ground so that you're gonna be able to get a really good slicing ability out of this knife. I will say with the, um, with the flat grind here and the swedge, it's a fairly fine tip. Let's see if I can show you that. There you go. So this is not a knife you're going to want to go dropping on the concrete floor or doing a lot of prying or anything with, but you shouldn't be doing any prying with your folding knife anyway. So that's really not a, an important point to bring up, but just to kind of get put it out there, it's a fairly fine tip blade, but highly, highly functional. All right. So, well, uh, I, I indicated at the beginning that I'm not in love with the way it looks. I can't say a bad thing at all about how it functions. It really has delivered for me in terms of performance. So I've got to give a lot of credit to the way that they've done this blade. Uh, moving on now to lockup and deployment. So we have here a stainless steel liner lock. On bearings, the flipper tab is 
pretty nicely done. There's a bit of jimping there. Uh, you can push button it or light switch it pretty easily. It's going to come flying open no matter what you do. And so they have the detent. I will say they have the detent nicely dialed in. In terms of you know sol how solid the blade is, there's no blade play of any kind. It is nice and smooth. And so that's one thing. And I think one of the things that appeals to people about this style of knife is you are getting a very nice action, really smooth, really fast. Uh, but you're not paying, you know, the ZT kind of price tag for it. And so uh, the the action on this is nice. It's smooth. It's fast. The lockup is solid. The lock bar itself is easy to actuate. Uh, again, the flipper tab is comfortable with jimping just enough to catch your finger well. I've never had problems with my fingers sliding off or anything like that. So uh, very, very good on lockup and deployment. Now, finally moving down to the handle. And this is probably about my favorite thing about the knife. Um, not only do I like the construction, I, you know, stainless steel liners with G10, nicely milled out to save weight. You know, all of those, those are all the right things, if you will. Fairly small backspacer, so you kind of get the best of both worlds here. You've got a backspacer that has a bit of jimping on it, which is nice, but it's still a very open construction knife, so it's easy for cleaning out and keeping it running nice and smooth. In terms of ergonomics, though, is where it really stands out. You've got enough room to get your finger up here and choke up on this knife, and this little thumb ramp has been extended far enough that you can get up here and do some fine detailed work. And then when you're doing just the regular stuff, you've still got a really nice, really comfortable grip. Uh, there is a little bit of jimping here that's only doing a little bit for me. But otherwise, you know, other than the jimping on the back of the blade could maybe be a little bit sharper, the, the ergonomics, how this knife feels in hand is really, really nice. And that's true in a bunch of different grips. So that to me is the big standout feature of this knife. It's so comfortable. And uh, that, of course, adds to its ease of use. You know, a knife that is comfortable in hand and has a really nicely ground blade is essentially, you know, all that you could ever ask for in a folding knife. I mean, it cuts really well and you're really comfortable while you're doing it. So to me, that's a big win. Uh, let's go ahead and get to some comparisons here. I think the most obvious comparison of all whenever you're looking at a stainless steel liner lock knife in D2 steel. You really have to pull the RAT Model 1 out there. Now the RAT 1 is gonna weigh a little bit more. The handle is just a little bit bigger. And, and you could probably argue this is not quite as refined, although, you know, I don't think, you know, if you were gonna ask me which one of these two would I rather take in the bush, I'd probably lean a little bit to the RAT 1 just because there's no bearings on it. So that's one thing you may wanna think about is the bearings on this knife you know, it's at a price point to be a real user, real EDC blade, but it is going to require just a little bit of maintenance. Uh, let me bring in the Tangram Santa Fe, not because it's super comparable, but because there are some Tangram models that are closer in size to this. And again, that and that may be something as well to consider. If you're looking for a budget Chinese folder, uh, it's hard to, to ignore those Tangram knives. Um, one thing I will bring in here is the Para 2, primarily to kind of show you the size on this. Uh, it's a fairly large knife and everyone is quite familiar with the Para 2, so by bringing that in you kind of get a good idea. Wanted to throw in the Victorinox Forester here. Uh, one, because it's very well known and just because, you know, this is a knife I like to bring in every once in a while to remind people that, you know, it doesn't have to be tactical and, and heavy duty and have all kinds of cool features to be a highly functional highly useful tool in your pocket. Finally, a couple of knives I want to bring in here sort of in the end just because for a little bit more money you can you can you could have the option of stepping up to something a fair bit tougher, a little bit more durable, either the Recon 1 or the Ultimate Hunter. And of course, if you, you know, uh, wanted to save a little money, you could probably lean toward the American Lawman or even the uh, all of a sudden I can't think of the name of the Broken Skull. There we go. Uh, so I thought, I thought I'd throw those two in as well, both for size comparison as well as I think, you know, this knife is definitely one of those knives that's meant to be used and carried and just used all the time. And I think both of those cold steels fit into that same category. All right. So there you go, guys. Those are some comparisons for you, both competitive options as well as size and function comparisons. Overall, I think Tuya Knife has done a really good job here. And if they are able to 
keep this level of quality and this level of functionality in their other models. I think they'll do really, really well. This knife is for sure one that um, has been a joy to use. I mean, it's comfortable, it cuts well, it does all the things that a folding knife should do. The only drawback that I can really, the only thing I can really detract from it with is I'm not in love with the looks of this knife, but really, uh, that's extremely subjective. So you may think this is the coolest looking knife you've ever seen. And if you do, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.